Okay, so now we're on record. You might have seen a notification that says we're now recording, but um, I am going to meet with Cengage at 12 o'clock today to talk about what is going on with the um, assignment links for all of the web assign assignments. So the first web assign assignment that you guys are supposed to see is that getting started with web assign at toward the bottom of the orientation module. Now, someone in the online class has mentioned to me that they had an issue and I had them taking screenshots and doing the whole bit. I had them join a Zoom session with the person from Cengage and it's not something that you guys can fix. It is something that's happening with Cengage. Um, their links are not working properly. And so I'm gonna meet with them today at noon to try to get that settled so that we can figure it out. Now, once I finish in that meeting, if I'm able to, if they're able to fix the problem and the links are able to work, I will send out a remind text to everyone. And then um, you guys can go in and get that done before midnight. And I won't extend the deadline because we still have plenty of time to get that one thing done. And it doesn't take a long time. And the only thing after that assignment is just to view um, the last page, which I'm gonna cover today anyway. So as long as you click on it, you'll be able to see the next module, okay? You will survive today without seeing the unit A module. I'm gonna click on anything that you need to see. And so you'll see it on screen and it'll be recorded. Um, and then we'll go into the lecture in a little bit soon. Um, so you won't miss anything too big for one day, okay? Um, if they are not able to fix that issue at that 12 o'clock hour, um, then I'm going to have to push the deadline for that uh, orientation until Wednesday, okay? So we'll, we'll figure out what's happening. Um, it's kind of in a flux right now because I don't know, you know, if they're going to be able to fix it or if they're not going to be able to fix it. So that's that. Um, let me... Yesterday, I didn't get to start at the beginning. It, it, you know, me as an instructor, I've been teaching for quite some time now, but still even then I get a little nervous whenever I meet a new group. Um, and so I think in all of the nervousness of um, the first day of class, I completely forgot to one, introduce myself, which I will do and I'll do it in more depth when I get to that last page in the orientation. Um, and on top of that, I forgot to go through the sequence of where you can how you get into the class, which I'm pretty sure all of you figured out because I've been getting a lot of those remind um, notifications that you guys are signing up for remind. So I know you've gone into the module and you figured it out. Also, I want you to see where to get access to the Zoom stuff. You may, if you didn't play around in Canvas, um, you may have found the Zoom link on your own if you played in Canvas. If not, you probably used my last email um, invite to uh, click on that. It's the same course ID every morning, okay? So if you do use that link that I sent in the welcome email, it will still work every single time, okay? Um, but I'm going to go through all of that at the beginning, and then um, and then we'll jump into the, the actual lecture, okay? I don't anticipate that today's lecture is going to take the entire um, time, so we have a little bit of wiggle room to, to talk about these things, okay? So I'm gonna share my screen. I hope everyone's doing okay today. Okay, so normally when you log into um, ACES, you'll see your home screen that looks like this. And then you'll just click over here on the Canvas icon. You can also click on the Canvas um, title right there at the bottom. But I'm going to click on the Canvas icon, and then you should see all of your classes. Now, I teach a bunch of math, so mine's all math. Um, but for you, you know, if you have English or biology or whatever other classes, they'll pop up here as well. Okay. Um, and so I have two classes that are exactly the same. I have the, the co-rec class that you guys are in, which is supposed to be face-to-face, -face, but currently we're remote for at least a little while. And then I also have the online version of the same course. And so just to give you a heads up, I have invited the um, online students to attend this class. Now they signed up for an online class, so more than likely they're probably just gonna want um, to watch the recordings. And 
So my recordings serve as a dual purpose. So one, they're for you guys if you happen to come in late or you have to leave a little bit early or if you have to be absent altogether because of um, whatever reason. Um, the recording is there for you guys as a resource as well. But I'm also using these recordings um, to help with the online class as well, okay? So I have invited them to come. So far, I've only had one person take me up on the offer and actually ask for the meeting ID. So I don't know if that person is in here. They might be. Um, but um, just to give you guys a heads up that I do teach two versions of the same and I have invited them to, to be on Zoom with us. I also, once we start going back face-to-face, -face, because there's only, um, I think 11 of you guys in here, I think I still have room for like three more people in the classroom. So I will invite up to three students um, per class period to come. As long as we don't go over that capacity of 15, um, we're still good. Okay. So let me go ahead and we'll talk about this. So we have two sections here. You have the 314 section there, and then you have the 1414 section here. The one that says algebra is the one that we will not really use. If I click on it, um, all it's gonna say is basically go back to the 1414 because that's where everything is housed, okay? So this one, um, I'm just gonna use this Canvas shell as the grade book for 314. So remember in the orientation, I talked about how when we get to the units, there are nine units, four of them are for 314, and then five of them are for the college algebra, the 1414, okay? Um, those four units that are for 314 are labeled with letters, A, B, C, and D. And then the five that are for the 1414 are labeled with numbers, one, two, three, four, five, okay? And so here, the only thing I'm gonna put in here is going to be your homework scores for units A, B, C, and D, and then your test scores for units A, B, C, and D. And if you notice the breakdown, it's in the syllabus. So if you click on the 314 class, and then you click on course syllabus here, it'll show you in the evaluation part that the breakdown for this class is 50-50. There's no final exam for this class. Um, there's nothing else extra, so it's just broken 50-50. So the, all your test scores and all your um, uh, unit homework averages. And I do treat the reviews as a homework assignment. So notice that it doesn't say web assign homework average, it just says web assign assignment average so that I can include both the homeworks and the review in that average, okay? So that's all really we need to know or have inside the 314 show. So if I go back here, I can actually click on the 1414 class. And this is the big one. This is where everything's going to be. Okay. So if I click on modules, or you can click here, these two things are linked to the same thing. Okay. So if you click here where it says click here to begin this course, it's going to take you to the same thing as if you had clicked modules. It's not any different. Okay. So it's going to take me here. And then I'm not sure if you guys saw my emails, but I tried to make it pretty straightforward to find the class recordings. So I will put all the class recordings right here. I do post them into YouTube. By doing that, it makes it easier for me to share it with the online class, okay? So I do post them in YouTube, and then when you click on this link here, it should open a window in YouTube, and then if you want to make it really, really large, especially when I start writing on paper, you probably want to uh, make it large so that you can see what's being written on the paper, okay? But I'm going to pause it because I really don't like hearing my own voice. I'm just going to close that out. But you get the idea <laughs> that it will open up this um, thing here. And I am logged in, so I apologize if you see some weird stuff on here. I have kids that use my YouTube app on my phone. And so every now and then I get like weird stuff on here. Um, but as you can see, this is the orientation. I'm not going to start it, but this was what we did yesterday. Okay. So those will be housed there. Now, as far as let me go back to modules. Just because this is the main place where you're going to work from is modules. 
Okay, everything is gonna be in there. Now, I think I only have the first module set up because I haven't migrated over the other modules, but there are more modules and I have them. I just haven't migrated them over. I've been building them in the online class and then I just push them over to be shared in this class, okay? Um, so with that said, there is a Zoom link here on the left-hand side. This is where you will go to log into class every day, or you can go to that same welcome email and click on that Zoom link and it should take you to the same, you know, back into Zoom for our meeting. But if you click here on Zoom, you'll see two things. Um, you'll see all the sessions that I have scheduled. I didn't know, supposedly we're supposed to go back to campus on September 8th, I believe. So I might need to delete these if we return face-to-face. But if for some reason, you know, because we're in flux right now because of all of the COVID situation. So if for some reason, one of us, any of us get sick, um, we will have to go back to Zoom for 10 days, okay? Whether all those 10 days are actual lecture days or to some of it's in the weekend, um, but I'll have to come back into Zoom and create meetings for those um, particular days. If the remote, um, situation gets extended beyond the 8th, then I already have these here, okay? Um, I think I did them all the way to December, so I'll just delete whichever ones we don't need as the days come, okay? But you can always start the Zoom meeting here, okay? Yours might look a little bit different because you're on the student end, whereas I'm as in the instructor end, you probably don't see a delete button um, because you're not, you don't have access to delete that. Another thing is that there are links to the previous. I can click on report and this tells me the attendance for the day. I'll click it just so you can see. I think all of us were in attendance, um, but this is awesome because it tells me um, how long everybody was logged in and then it tells me um, their names. So this is how I take attendance if I don't take it live while we're in class. Now, for some reason, I don't know why, but I don't know if it's something that you guys click on on your end or what causes this to happen, but sometimes it breaks up your time into two intervals. So notice how for me, it says 160 minutes. And then for these people, it says 108 minutes. But then like, let's say for instance, Aaron has eight minutes, but if I go to the second page, it'll have Aaron again, and then with 108 minutes. So it might break up your time um, it really doesn't matter to me that it broke it up. I can compensate for that. I can account for that. So I will mark your attendance based on that. What I am looking out for is for someone that just comes in. I think I saw this person on the other page too. So they probably have two time chunks. But as far as attendance, um, if someone's in for only like 10 or 15 minutes <laughs> of the hour and 45 minute class period, that would not be considered full attendance, okay? So they would be deemed with like a tardy, if that makes any sense. Um, honestly, I mark the grade book because I'm required to, I have to keep records. Um, but as far as like dropping people for attendance, that's not my main concern. However, I don't want to encourage anyone to be absent because there's a lot of information that gets shared. This is your opportunity to like jump in and ask questions um, so that you don't get confused or so that as things start to pile on in difficulty, you don't lose track of you know, your sense of, of logic in the process. So it is very much helpful to have that opportunity to be live and to jump in and ask questions when you have questions. So I strongly encourage perfect attendance if possible, okay? Um, however, if you do have to be gone or you did have to log in late and log out early for some reason, yes, I'm gonna mark a tardy in the grade book, but that doesn't mean you're gonna be dropped from the class if you rack up a bunch of tardies, okay? That's on you. You guys are adults. You have your responsibilities. You manage your life the way you manage it, right? Um, the only thing is that I'm concerned with is when you start falling off on your completion of your assignments, when your scores on your assignments are not doing great, you know, when things start to perfect, um, affect your performance, 
that's when I have um, an issue with attendance. Okay, that's when I'm going to be like, hey, well, wait a minute. You're not doing everything you could possibly do to pass this class because you're not even showing up to class, right? So that's really the only time I'll ever bring up attendance is like, hey, your grades are not doing great. I need you to start coming to class regularly, okay? Um, but for the most part, I hope that everyone just gets into the habit of being here. I mean, this is the time frame you signed up for, so there's really no reason why we shouldn't be here, okay? Um, also, I don't know if there's any confusion in other classes, especially Tuesday, Thursday classes, there is confusion. A lot of folks think that class is only on Thursday because in the schedule, it will say like TR. And so they think that that's Thursday, but it's not. T stands for Tuesday and R stands for Thursday. Okay. And so I don't know that there was any confusion with ours because ours has MTWH, I mean MTWR. So I'm guessing that all of you figured out that that was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, but just to make that clear, we do meet four days a week from eight to 945. We have to have that amount of time because we have to cover two course, two courses worth of material, right? So we need as much time as we can get. Okay, back to the modules. I also wanna point out that if you are unable to buy the calculator, um, the black calculator, the TI-36X Pro, um, if you click here on student resources, and then you click here down at the bottom where it says calculator loan prop program, you can actually click on this form here and you need to know which calculator you need. So it's actually TI-36X Pro. If you look in the image, there's an X there. Um, I don't, I don't think there's a 36 without an X, but who knows? <laughs> um, but all of them that I know of always say 36 X Pro. And if you have the one with the X or the one without the X, if one exists without the X, um, it doesn't matter, they both do the same thing, okay? But if I click here, it's gonna take me to a Google form and you're going to tell them which calculator you need. So make sure you're saying, the TI-36 Pro or the TI-36 X Pro, again, they're one and the same, I believe. We only have one of them, so they'll know which one you're talking about, okay? If it asks you what class you're taking, do not put the 314, put the 1414 class, okay? Because you need the calculator that's gonna work for the hardest level course, not the easiest level course. So make sure that you type in the correct class uh, number, which is 1414. And then it's also going to ask you in this form for um, a time frame where you can come on campus to pick it up. Okay, you'll go to the department office, it'll have information in there. And when you're done, it should send you an email confirming um, which calculator you're going to get, what time you signed up for, and all of that good stuff. So I just wanted you guys to be aware that that's there if you don't want to purchase the calculator on your own. Um, I have had some questions in the online class about the calculator, and I addressed it in this class. I do accept, you know, using a scientific calculator. You can use a scientific calculator. The only ones that are not allowed are graphing calculators, okay? Even this, I mean, this is obvious because it's got a graph in the picture, but even the TI Inspire is also a graphing calculator, so not allowed. Um, the TI-84, is a graphing calculator not allowed? The 87, the 91, the 90, all of those are not allowed because they are graphing calculators. If your screen looks like a square, it's not allowed, okay? If the screen looks like a rectangle, then that's allowed. And that's just the quick, easy way to know and tell the difference, okay? Um, so you can use any scientific calculator. This one is better though. This one will help you do matrix problems later at the end of the semester when we get to matrix problems. These other scientific calculators do not do matrix problems. So yes, you can use them, but if you want the big dog, it's gonna be the, the 36 Pro, okay? That's the one that's gonna help us the most later, okay? For now, you could use whatever scientific calculator you want. 
You could even use a basic four function calculator. Those are the ones that just, I mean, the dollar store ones, right? I blinged mine out, but, <laughs> but it's just a regular calculator that you do multiply, add, subtract, and divide on, okay? So even just a basic calculator is perfectly okay. It won't help you out as much as the scientific ones, but it's there if, as an option. I typically don't use the calculator all too much. I mean, I truly don't. And when I teach, I teach you to do it the way I do it, where I'm doing mostly everything by hand. And I resort to the calculator only at the very, very end when I'm too lazy to like compute some numbers. Um, and so that's really the only reason or places where we'll use the calculator. You will be learning to graph in this class, which is why I don't want us to use the graphing calculator. Because when you get to some of the higher level courses like Cal 2 specifically, but a little bit in Cal 1, um, you're gonna need to know how to graph these things like just really quick because you don't wanna spend 20 minutes trying to graph something when you haven't even gotten to the big problem, like the actual problem. Um, but having those visuals of the graph helps immensely um, when you're getting the calculus. So that's why we're gonna learn how to do them. We're gonna learn how to do them by hand, okay? Um, okay, lots and lots of announcements there. <laughs> um, now, I did see that a lot of you were able to get into the readiness quiz now, so fantastic. Make sure you're posting your paperwork in here. Somebody sent me paperwork and email and it literally says in the directions, do not do that. Um, so I'm not sure why, maybe they did it just in case and they did it, they put it into the practice assignment and they emailed me. I haven't double checked yet because I just came in about a little bit uh, less than an hour ago. So I haven't double checked on all of that, um, but make sure that you're putting your paperwork in this practice uploading paperwork assignment, okay? Don't email it to me, don't text it to me and remind, it needs to go in there. Because when it comes to test time, um, I can't, I have three classes. <laughs> and, and funny enough, some of the tests align, well, all of the tests align for this class and the online class, the dates that the tests are due. But in my pre-cal class, um, they also have some of their tests that align. So there could be days where I'm grading three classes worth of tests I cannot be hunting around for everybody's paperwork, looking in my email, looking in my Canvas inbox, looking in my Remind inbox, looking in the practice assignment on here. It becomes super overwhelming and very, very much time consuming, okay? And the longer that I take trying to do all these things that I put policies in place for to avoid, um, they're going to take a lot of extra time, which means you're not gonna get that feedback as quickly, okay? So help me <laughs> help you get your feedback quickly and make sure you put things in the right place. And that's why I have such a strict policy about, hey, if it's not here, by the time it's supposed to be here, where it's supposed to be, then you get a zero. Because that's how important I feel like this is. You need to be able to put things where they belong, when they belong there, okay? So remember, you have 30 minutes after submitting a quiz or a test, to get that paperwork in. This first time, I do not ding you on your time. I might just make a note and say, hey, look, it took you three hours to get this in here. Practice this process over and over and over again until you're able to get that down in less than 30 minutes. Some of you have figured it out really good and you've got it in there like in six minutes. Fantastic, I love that. Um, that's really all it should take, but you know, everybody works at a different speed. So that's why I gave you the window of 30 minutes, okay? But make sure you put that in there because I did get some emails with some paperwork and that should not be the case. Okay, once you get down to here, a lot of you have activated your unlimited subscriptions, which is great. I appreciate you doing that. You need to do that to avoid being charged when you actually click on a web assign assignment, okay? So after you click this unlimited subscription, then you would have looked at the web assign settings page, which just explains, um, these are the three things that I didn't get to yesterday. So I'm gonna continue from here a little bit. This is just explained to you how the assignments work. Every assignment has an automatic 10 submissions or attempts, which means you can enter the answer and check it 
10 times. Now you can do that for each problem. So you can submit your answer for number one, and then if it's wrong, change your answer. And then if it's wrong a second time, change your answer and keep doing that 10 times until you get it right or you run out of all 10 attempts, okay? However, I suggest, just me personally, I suggest going through the entire assignment and doing all the problems and then clicking submit assignment. What it'll do is it'll grade everything, all of the problems, and then you can go back starting with number one and just redo all the problems that got marked wrong, okay? How you do it is up to you. That's just my suggestion. It helps me keep track of my submissions if I submit everything all together um, versus doing it problem by problem. But a lot of students like to do it problem by problem and that's okay. Um, and sometimes people, and this is why I don't suggest doing it for a problem, is because I will do number one like five times and then get frustrated with it and go on to number two. But by the time I finish number two, I don't remember how many submissions I used on number one, right? Um, and then you get frustrated when you're trying to submit your answer on the 10th try, not knowing it's the 10th try, and it's not accepting it. Um, if that happens, it's because you ran out of submissions, okay? So if it's no longer accepting your entry changes, then you've run out of submissions. You can click the extension request button and ask me to give you more attempts. So I used all my 10 on number five. I need more so that I can keep working on number five and get it right. I have no problem with giving you a million attempts. It's just that the default on the assignment is 10, okay? But once you submit it and once you give me that extension request, I can just click a little button and change the number of attempts that you have, okay? So make sure, make sure if you're, if you're trying to get more uh, attempts on an assignment, then you submit an extension request and you specifically say, I need more attempts or I need more submissions or however, which way you want to call that. That is different than asking for an extension of a deadline, okay? So there's two different kinds. There's attempt extensions, which are unlimited. You can request them anytime, any day. I'll give you 10 million of them. It's all good, right? Then there's the deadline extensions. And for this one, um, ours is not a short semester. I think that phrase was left in there from summer. Um, but ours is not a short semester. We have the regular 16. It might feel like it's short because we're having to do two classes worth of material in it. Um, but I don't want people falling behind because that is like the recipe for disaster, right? Um, you don't wanna fall behind because then it's really hard to try to catch up. So, but I do understand that we have emergencies and that things come up. So I do allow um, due date extensions. I try to limit it to three, okay? Which usually will be um, either half of a whole unit or a whole unit, especially when our units are only a week long. Um, so, it could buy you about a week's worth of time. And you, you do have to tell me the reason, okay? You can say for personal reasons, you know, I, you know or you can be more detailed, um, whatever, however you phrase that is up to you, but just make sure that you do give me a reason, okay? Um, I've had people just flat out say, I was lazy this week and I didn't get to it. <laughs> um, and I understand that too, trust me. Um, so, I get it, just make sure you put a reason in there, okay? Um, but if I get like 10 million I'm lazies this week and that week and the next week, then of course there's an issue, right? Um, but that's that. So I just wanted to make you aware of the two different kinds of extension requests, okay? One is for attempts, um, no boundaries on that. You can request them anytime. Deadline extensions, you do have up to three. Now, if there's a, a serious circumstance um, that requires you to have more than just the three, then trust me, I understand the emergencies and we can have those. Those are not the kinds that I'm gonna accept. Um, I was just lazy this week, right? Um, those will be an exceptional situation where there's probably an emergency or something going on, okay? But please, please keep open communication with me. That's the whole reason I set up the Remind 
and so that you guys can um, feel comfortable um, communicating with me what's going on whether you're getting stuck on something whether you know you need help with something all of that good stuff now here when i click it it works it takes me into web assign but for some reason when the students are clicking it it's taking them back to that Cengage and limited screen now we asked the students to clear the cache to clear the history to clear the cookies thinking that maybe that would clear up the situation and they'd be able to get into web assign but we did that in zoom live with one of the online students and it did not um it still did not work so because of that, now we know that there's a problem with link and it's not necessarily has anything to do with your computer or how you're managing your browser or anything like that, okay? So that was what I mentioned at the beginning of class that I am working with them to try to get fixed. And if that fix gets delayed, then uh, so will the due date, it'll also get postponed, okay? I can still cover the lectures, except you won't be able to go into your homework right away afterward until we get this situation fixed, okay? So if it helps you to view the recording, like once we get this thing fixed, to view the recording again before you actually go try that um, homework assignment, that, that is what the recordings are there for, okay? So just in case, you know, things are like they are with me one ear and one in one ear and out the other. <laughs> Sometimes I don't carry the information with me for too long. Um, then you have that option to go back and look at it. Okay. Once you do finish that assignment, you should be able to come here for the um, congratulations story. And so it says that um, the orientation really solved two purposes. It was to get you acclimated to the class and my expectations to see how well you follow directions, completing two part assignments, like for instance, the, the readiness quiz, right? You got to go take the quiz, but then you got to go submit your paperwork. Um, and then it, for the, <laughs> and this is like for the future because it happens every semester. So it says for the most part, the majority of you follow directions. I already have some people not following the directions. If you go look at the discussions, there were in the welcome discussion, there's a direction in there and it says to make sure you post, you know, your major, something fun about yourself, that whole bit, right? Which everyone that's participated in that discussion has done that. But there was a second part and it said you also had to reply to someone else in the class. And that part, not everyone has done. So even in this class, even though it ha we haven't finished the orientation yet, there are still some people having some problems with following directions, okay? And that is going to be the nemesis in this class, I promise you. It might not necessarily be the actual math, it's going to be following directions, okay? Um, you have to make sure that you read them, you understand them, you jot notes down for yourself if you have to, but it's going to be those directions that are gonna put a, a little stick in your in your side. Okay, so if you want the class to go seamlessly, of course, number one, follow the directions. And that comes to the assignments as well. A lot of times on these assignments, they tell you specifically how they want you to enter your answer, whether they want the answer as a decimal or they want the answer as a fraction. And if you're typing in the wrong one, it's gonna keep telling you you're wrong. And you're gonna be like, but wait a minute, miss, I solved this thing and it's right, I know it's right. And it is, it's just not in the right form that they're asking you for. So make sure that you follow those directions, okay? Um, make sure that you go through each module and every assignment within it, okay? Everything in these modules is everything you need to complete the entire unit, okay? So all the web assign links are in there, everything, all the, the uh, notes that you're gonna need are in there, everything is gonna be in there, okay? Um, and managing your time is really going to be the biggest thing. Make sure you make time for homework. Fantastic. I believe, you know, you are putting in maximum amount of effort. And I appreciate when you put in that maximum amount of effort to make it to class every single day and have perfect attendance. I love that so much. It makes me feel better. Like, I know that you're getting all of the information that you need to be successful. Okay. 
Um, I have confidence in everyone when they are showing the class all the time. However, your participation in this course goes beyond class time. You do still have to get your what they call quote unquote homework, right? And that is stuff that you do outside of class. So don't forget that you will not pass the class. I can promise you, you will not pass if you're not doing the homework, okay? So make sure that even though you're coming to class and you're getting all the lecture stuff, that is great. You need that, right? But also make sure that you go in and do your homework. It sounds silly to say, right? Uh, Cause I'm talking to a bunch of adults, but I promise you there's always a handful of students that just don't do the homework, okay? And that's not gonna be good for your success. Okay, um, you can text me in the remind. I will double check, but I believe all 11 of you have signed up. If you haven't, go through that orientation module, get to that remind assignment, and then click on join, type in your cell phone number, and then um, you'll be set up in remind, okay? I think there's only one person that was missing last night around seven, but I'm not sure if that person signed up after that. Um, Okay, if you text me after 5 p.m., I may not return it to the following morning. Most times before I go to bed for the day, I do check and I do respond. Um, so, you know, even if it's after 5 p.m., you may get a response, you may not. I know this last night, I went to sleep like around nine and I have to because I wake up at four something in the morning. But I went to sleep at nine and there were some people that messaged me after nine. Um, and I do turn my phone off to what is it do not disturb mode so that way my phone's not ringing and chiming all night waking me up okay um I do need my sleep I do have three kids <laughs> I need my sleep in order to manage everything in the morning and throughout the whole next day okay um so I do turn that off so that's why you might not get a response okay um but once I make dinner and I get the kids settled down and they're doing their thing you know whether they're reading or watching tv or playing games or whatever I do take a little bit of time at that point in my day to go and respond to anything that's happened between the time that I left work and, and that moment, okay? Um, I usually will respond within 12 hours though, okay? So even if you know I come off at nine o'clock, I'm going to respond before nine o'clock the next morning, okay? You'll notice that before today's class, there were a few of you that messaged me last night. And so I replied this morning before class started, okay? Um, if you don't get a response from me within 12 hours, email me or text me again, because that is not usual, okay? That means I might have either overlooked it or um, it may have been, there is a thing in my ACES email called quarantine. And so sometimes if you're using like a Gmail account, don't ever use a Gmail account, use Canvas or use your ACES email. Because if you use Gmail or Yahoo or AOL or whatever the things are now, um, it sometimes will go to my quarantine folder, okay? And so that is a reason why sometimes I don't see people's messages. But if you're signing up for Remind, I would just text me because I do go through those. Um, but I do have kids that use my devices, um, especially the little one down here, the boy. He uses my devices and he does a lot of weird things on my devices. And so sometimes if I get a notification of a text or a message or anything, he might swipe it away. And then if he swipes away that notification, sometimes I can still see it if I go into the app, but then sometimes somehow he'll erase the notification in that thing, meaning he probably viewed the message. And so then I miss it and I try my hardest and it hasn't happened a whole lot. I think maybe once in the last like year or two where I just completely missed a message. But when they messaged me 12 hours later, I responded right away, okay? So just let me know if I don't respond within 12 hours something weird happened and it most likely had to do with my four-year-old, okay? <laughs> I apologize for that, but I mean, that's life, right? And it happens. Um, okay, so here's a little quick snippet. The president of the college does ask us to like, make you guys realize that we are human. We're not geniuses. We're not robots. We are people. Um, and so we do have our background stories. I have a bunch of stories to tell. Um, you know, about fighting against diversity, about, or adversity, you know, being a statistic and having to come out from all of that. Um, I definitely have a lot of stories to tell, but I'm not going to get into all of that. Just a quick, short little paragraphs here. 
Um, so my name is Jessica Lopez, and of course I am this instruct the instructor for this class. Um, and I just wanted to give you just a little bit. So I did grow up in poverty in a single parent household with my mother being that single parent. Um, and so then I knew that I needed to go to college because I grew up in poverty. And I didn't even know I lived in poverty until I was like already finishing high school. I honestly just did not know. We always had food on the table. I didn't know that it came from food stamps from the government. Um, we had a TV, we had, you know, electricity and all of that. So I had no idea that we were in poverty until I realized that my mom made $11,000 a year and that was it. <laughs> and then when I told that to someone, they were like, oh my God, <laughs> you are poor. And I was like, what? No, I'm not. So yeah, I had no idea. Um, <laughs> so that's that. But because of that, I knew I was going to need financial aid in order to go to school. And I knew I wanted to go to school because I did not want to struggle. I did not want to have two jobs and depend on, well, it was me, but depend on my oldest child to be taking care of the other children. But that's essentially what happened to me. I basically had to raise my three younger brothers because my mom was busy working. I mean, that's how she was keeping the roof over our head, right? Um, so just to give you a little bit of how that happened, I did grow up on the south side of San Antonio. I went to McCullum High School. And in McCullum High School, I was actually very, very, very active. Um, I was in a whole bunch of clubs, like dance team, engineering club, the, oh God, the Spanish club, even though I don't speak Spanish. Um, I mean, I know a little bit, but <laughs> not a lot. And uh, it's just not something that our family taught us. But um, but I was, I was very, very much involved in high school. So it makes sense that later I can manage having a lot of things on my plate, okay? Um, I was a first-generation student, and other than myself, um, I only have one other cousin now. He was a lot younger than me, but now he's graduated, and he has his master's degree as well, and he's actually going to surpass me because he'll probably get his PhD before I do, um, but, and then that is awesome for him, um, but yeah, I was the first person ever in all of my family history to go and graduate from college. Um, I had a couple of people that maybe went for a semester, but then didn't finish. Um, I did get my associate's degree in mathematics at Palo Alto College, which is one of the Alamo colleges. It's just on the south side, because like I said, that's where I grew up. Um, and then after that, I went to get my bachelor's degree in mathematics at UTSA, which is not, it's still in town, right? Um, and then eventually I got my master's degree in mathematics. So all my degrees are in mathematics. Um, I have taken a lot of courses like for teaching and things like that to help me um, figure out what is the best, most effective way to teach. I still also go to a lot of professional development now focused on teaching and delivery and things like that. The biggest things that I try to do is create a positive learning environment for you guys. I want you guys to feel comfortable to ask me questions. Don't ever apologize for asking the question. Don't ever tell me at the beginning of your question, this is probably a stupid question. No, it is not, okay? It is something that you need to get clarified and that makes it not stupid, okay? Um, so definitely always, always feel comfortable with asking me questions at any point. Even if you're interrupting me, I don't mind at all. OK, um, I don't mind. That does not bother me. I know there are some instructors that get upset when you interrupt them, but I am not one of those. So please do not ever feel that way. OK, I want you guys to ask questions because not only does it help you in a sense that you get, you know, the clarification that you're seeking, but it also helps me to gauge where you are and where I am as far as like explaining things properly. OK, so questions help both of us immensely. Um, I did tutor at Palo Alto and, and um, St. Phillips. So between 2002 and 2010, I was a tutor. I think in 2005, I became a full-time tutor. Um, and since then, I started teaching at St. Phillips in 2008. So I was teaching part-time for St. Phillips in 2008. Um, and then in 2010, I got hired on full-time. And I was on a six year probationary period, but now I am actually a tenured instructor. 
one of the last tenured instructors because the district is trying to go away with tenure, which basically means everyone else that got hired after me is on a yearly contract. They do not have a guaranteed job. Um, our department tries to do the best to make sure that they're still employed, but you never know what could happen with non-tenured faculty. So I got super lucky that I got in the door right before they closed it. <laughs> um, I do understand that students do face hardships because I myself have been through the ringer. I promise you, I mean, just about, I mean, a lot of things have happened. I wouldn't say just about everything because there's always things that can still happen. Um, but I have experienced so many things like illness to the point I'm in the hospital. Um, I've had loss of family members, including a parent. I've had, you know, some traumatic events happen to me. I've had dramatic events happen to me, mostly to do with family or boyfriends, things like that. I've had to move in the middle of a semester. I've been hospitalized again, either due to illness or due to childbirth. Um, and I have also even worked 60 hours per week as a single parent while attending school full time. So I promise you, I know the struggles, okay? I get it. But even with all those experiences, um, through my eight years of going through school to get my master's degree, I never, never, never missed an assignment or turned in an assignment late ever, okay? And that was really hard to do at times. I literally had a baby on a Monday, <laughs> turned, missed Tuesday's class, okay? I never had perfect attendance, and I, I promise you that. I never had perfect attendance. There were some classes I just never even went to. I just read the book, did the homework, showed up for the test, bam, A. Those were my math classes. Um, I'm really good at math, um, but that was how I, I treated those classes because that worked for me, okay? Um, but in my teaching class, I had a presentation on Thursday and I missed my Tuesday class because I was in the hospital with the baby, but I still showed up on Thursday to give them that research paper with my group. Um, so that just shows you how much dedication that I had to completing things that I start, okay? Um, and that goes the same way for this class. All of you guys, I feel, are my responsibility. You learning the material and you passing this class is my responsibility. Now, it is your responsibility as well to do what you need to do to get there, right? But I do put some of that weight on myself. I want to make sure that I'm perfectly clear in my expectations. I want to make sure that I'm perfectly clear in my explanations of the math. Um, I want to make sure that you guys feel comfortable with chiming in and asking questions. That's all on me, okay? I definitely want to be here on time every day, you know, and do my part. And then, of course, you guys have to do your part by being here on time every day and then getting all of your assignments done. And when you get confused or when you get stuck, to text me, to message me, okay? Don't just throw it to the side because you got stuck or you're getting frustrated. Message me. I can walk you through it, okay? What I don't do is give answers. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't pass the class for you. You've got to do it, right? Um, but I do try to do everything in my power to facilitate that success, okay? Um, even if it has to do with things outside of class, if you're taking a reading class and you don't know where to go to get help with the paper, ask me, okay? Um, I have been in college since 2000, literally, right? I have been you know, a student for eight years, and then after that, I've been a professor. I have been in this college environment almost, you know, more than half of my life, okay? I've been in this environment. I know where the resources are. I know where to go for this or that, okay? And if I don't know, I know who to ask. So if you have questions, even if they're not math class related, please feel free to ask, okay? I can point you in the correct direction, okay? Um, so I was a single parent, back to my thing. <laughs> I was a single parent for four years until 2011. So I had this beauty here, um, Celine, when 2006. And so then until about 2011, I was um, a single parent. That might be more than four years, but anyway, it's not important. Um, eventually, I met my boyfriend that I have now, and we have two children since then. And so, of course, we like doing the normal things like all of you guys. I've been reading your 
stuff. We watch movies, we play games. We like the Marvel and the DC. I think I saw some of that. I don't know if it was this class or the online class, um, but we like some of those same things, playing games, all kinds of video games, even board games, everything. And then we also like going to the park. Um, I personally like going to concerts and this one is now starting to go with me. 14 year old is starting to go with me to concerts. So that's cool. Um, and I don't think you can tell in this photo, but my seven-year-old, um, she actually was born with cleft lip and palate. So that basically means her face was like not all together when she was born, but after some surgeries, she now has this smile. Um, and so I still have, she still has surgeries to go to help her with this. So if I ever am having to be absent, I try my hardest to schedule everything outside of class. But if I am having to be absent or have to go to remote um, for something or another, it's probably due to my seven-year-old because she does have a bone graft coming up soon where they're gonna take pieces of her hip and put it in her face somehow, I don't know. Um, but that is going to happen at some point I'm hoping not this semester. I'm hoping not till next semester, but there's a lot of appointments that we have to go to leading up to that surgery. Um, she's also going to get some devices placed in her, the roof of her mouth pretty soon. So again, this is just things that I have to deal with and manage outside of the classroom. So I just want to make you aware that, that that's happening, you know, behind doors. Okay. So I am human, of course. There's a couple of things that bothered me. You probably have figured them out already, but one of the things is people who don't read everything thoroughly and people who don't follow directions. And I can tell who you are by what you're doing in the orientation module. If you forgot to reply to someone else's post in the welcome discussion, that shows me you're having a problem with directions. If you're one of the people that went and texted me or emailed me your paperwork, Again, having a problem with following directions. If you're one of the people that ask a question about the syllabus that is clearly in the syllabus, you're not reading things thoroughly. Um, so those are just, and they're common things. We're all human. I even do these things myself. I can't even tell you how many times my boss laughs at me because <laughs> I get after people who don't follow directions or read things thoroughly. And then sure enough, I miss something that I was supposed to have read thoroughly. So I know how it goes. It even irritates me when I do it myself. Um, but just make sure you try your hardest, like I do, um, to not miss anything that you read and not miss any of the directions. Um, and then if you have to, if you ever get confused or have a question, you go back, right? And, and read it again, just to make sure. Okay. Um, if you have us ask a question that has already been answered, I will refer to you where it can be found. Um, I think I've done it in the online class. I don't think I've done it in this discussion, in this class's discussion, but there were some people that were asking questions about stuff that was in the syllabus. So I literally screenshotted and highlighted the syllabus where it answered their question that they asked, that they were supposed to ask after they read it, right? So that's what I mean by like, I'll just, or I'll just tell you a text, go look here and that's where you can find it, okay? Um, I do not allow people to turn in late work. Two reasons, one, you know, yes, I have a personal reason because of the fact that I've gone through all kinds of things myself and still managed to never turn in anything late. But two, it puts me off track personally as a professional. If everybody doesn't turn everything in at one point in time, I have to remember, hey, go back and go look at this person's stuff or go back and look at this person's stuff. And when I have, you know, 60 students, that's very hard to remember, okay? Um, and hard to keep track of. So that's why I really, really appreciate it when everybody just gets everything done when they're supposed to get it done, okay? It helps me stay organized. It helps you stay organized. It puts us on the same page. We can keep track of everything together, okay? And then, like I said, I can always provide feedback a lot faster if everything is happening when I expect it to happen, okay? Um, doing the work last minute and then asking for a repeat. This is in here, reprieve, I didn't say that right. Um, this is in here because it has happened a lot of times, a lot of times where students will not do any homework. And then the day of the test, they're trying to do all their homework and then they bomb the test. And then they're like, miss, can I have, can I redo the test? No. <laughs> I'm letting you know now, cram, cramming, right? That's what they call it when you like pull an all-nighter or whatever and you 
try to get everything, all the information in and get all the homework assignments done in like one or two days, I, that doesn't work, not for this class. It may work for history. It may work for English. It does not work for math. Math needs time to process. So it is much better to do a little bit, let that process and sink in overnight, then come back and do a little bit more. Let that sink in and process per night. Um, so I strongly encourage, like as we cover the sections, that you try to get those sections homework done that same day. One, because you have the information fresh in your brain, so it'll it'll help you to complete the assignment faster. And then two, that practice with that information helps hone in the whole main idea of that section. And so then when you sleep on that at night, your brain has time to process and it can retain the information better than you trying to cram everything. What happens with you trying to cram everything is you either blank out when you're taking the test or you literally just do not remember anything, okay? Um, because there was so much to try to remember, things start overlapping and it doesn't make sense anymore, okay? So please, please, please make sure that you try to spread out the workload throughout the week and don't try to do it all in one day, okay? Um, that's just advice. I can't control what you do, nor am I trying to control what you do. You are adults. You could do it however you want. I'm only giving you the tried and true method that has been working for years for many, 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 many students, okay? Whether you want to go against the grain, that is on you guys individually, okay? Um, so despite my pet peeves, I am friendly. I'd like to think of myself <laughs> as friendly. I'm not trying to be silly or anything, but I would hope that you guys find me friendly. I would hope that you guys feel comfortable um, with me. And I truly do care about your guys' success, whether it's in this class or even just in your general goals. I really care about how you guys do. Um, I don't know who you guys are going to be, they say, when you grow up, right? <laughs> um, I don't know what you guys are going to do. I mean, you could be my doctors, you could be my lawyers eventually, you could be anyone, the people building the buildings that I'm, that I'm sitting in. Um, so I always have the utmost respect for every single one of you guys, um, because you never know, right? One of you could be the president of the United States sitting in this cast. I have no idea. Um, so everyone deserves to be treated that way. Okay. Um, so I'm never trying to like discourage you. I don't ever want you to feel like I'm trying to, you know, be negative toward you. I, I really, really, really want to create a positive environment. Okay. Um, if you do ask a question that I've already answered somewhere, I'll show you or tell you where to go. If it's something else, I can figure out how to get you help. I've already mentioned that. Um, make sure you do read everything thoroughly. And here's the big one. Do all you're required to do by planning when you plan to do it, okay? That is the biggest part. Knowing that you have five homework assignments to do is fantastic. I'm glad that's on your radar. But making the time to get them done, that's a whole nother ballpark, okay? So if you do these things, if you read everything thoroughly, you complete everything you're required to do, and you make sure you plan when you're gonna get it done, you will most likely pass. It's very, 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 very rare that if you do all three of those things that you don't pass. And not only do you pass, but you get A's, okay? If you're doing those three things. So make sure that you're making time for everything in this class, okay? Um, with all that said, we still have about 45 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and get to today's lesson. So I'm gonna go back to modules. I know you guys don't have access to this yet and it's not that big of a deal, but I'm going to click on the notes where you can find them. So once you do finish this congratulatory story thing, once you get the web assign assignment done, and then you view this, you just have to click on it. I already basically covered it. Um, then you can click on this thing here. And this basically just tells you the learning outcomes for this class. So we need to be able to do all of these things before the first test. Um, and so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna attend the, the lectures in Zoom or watch the recordings. Uh, we're gonna do the corresponding homework assignments, the corresponding review. We're gonna contribute to the discussion, the Q&A discussion that we have about the review. 
And then you're, of course, going to take your test and turn in your paperwork. So those are the to-do lists for this whole unit, okay? Now, when are, things, when are these things due? That's what the timeline is there for for the week, okay? Or for this unit, okay? So Monday is orientation. Tuesday, we're finishing this, and it's going to be due unless I postpone it. And if I do, I'll put a, a, an announcement about that. And then we're gonna cover this section, okay? And I will post it as soon as it uh, populates in my inbox. Then Wednesday, we're gonna cover this section. And then Thursday, we're gonna cover this two sections. Um, come on, they're not very long, so we can do both of them within one class period. They're both very, very short. It's this one that's the longest one for this first unit. Um, then over the weekend, Hopefully you're doing the assignments as soon as we get WebAssign fixed, right? Hopefully after we get WebAssign fixed that um, you will keep up with the assignments each day. If not, you do have Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to work on stuff, okay? So Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I need you to finish all the homework and the unit review. And then when we see each other again that Monday, we're gonna have a Q&A session over the review, okay? So that's your opportunity to ask any and all questions that you have pertaining to the test, pertaining to the problems on the review, everything. That's your chance to like get it all clear in your mind what's going on, what's expected, okay? Um, and then the test, I don't actually do it during class. You have the whole day to take it. Now, whether you take it before class or whether you take it after class on Monday is completely up to you, okay? But it will be due on Monday um, by 11.29 p.m. And then your paperwork is due by 11.59 p.m. So because of that, the test is an hour long. So you need to start it by 10.29 p.m., the latest that Monday. If you have a test accommodation from the disability services, I would have received the letter. And if I receive the letter before the test is due, I will go in there and make the modification. Um, and then in that case, it probably should be nine, not eight o'clock, um, because you need that extra hour. So you would have to go in there and start it by 9.29. Dun, dun, dun. Sorry, I'm just going to edit this real quick while we're, while we're in here. But for some reason, Canvas is taking just a little bit to figure out what it's doing. So right there, I'm going to delete. OK. There we go. So hopefully that will save it. And then now I can keep going. Today, you guys probably already know how to do what we're doing today, but I'm going to talk about it anyway, just to make sure we're all on the same page. This is going to take me to WebAssign. I hope it works because this one did not work. See, it gave me an error. So I have no idea what's going on with Cengage. Um, if anything, I will just go into WebAssign. Oh, look, it is going to work. No, it's because I clicked the button. Um, but that assignment, that link should take me to the WebAssign assignment. But again, we already established that the links are not working for some reason, and I'm going to try to fix that at noon. Um, but if it were working, I'm going to take you <laughs> where it should have gone. And these things with the titles, the unit A, the title, those are actually um, Oh, it's gonna make me edit it, I forgot. I'm a teacher, so it gives me a different view than it gives you. So this is the view that it gives you in WebAssign. Um, I think when you go through it from Canvas, it says description and there's nothing here, but there's a drop down arrow. And if you click that drop down arrow, then it should give you the unit A workbook link. And so, and there's only one answer you can answer. So yes, I'm aware I can download the workbook file here. You just click true and then click submit and then that's done, okay? Um, but these are the notes that we're gonna use for the lectures, okay? So this is unit A. We're gonna be covering P.3, which is multiplication of polynomials. That's all we're doing 
Today, we're not going to be doing factoring or anything like that. We're just going to be doing multiplying. So it says one of the most common types of algebraic expressions is the polynomial. And then some examples are 2x plus 5, 3x to the fourth, minus 7x squared, plus 2x plus 4. Then you've got this one over here that looks a little bit weird because it's got two different variables in it, right? You've got 5x squared, y squared, minus xy plus 3. So what makes a polynomial a polynomial then, right? Because those, these first two only had x's. This one now has x's and y's. Why is that one in blue still considered a polynomial, right? Um, the reason is, is that as long as you have terms in this form where it's a x to a exponent, and you could have as many variables as you want there, okay? All that matters is that that exponent is what's called um, a positive integer, meaning 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, a million, right? So notice that the variable here, it doesn't show an exponent, but when there's no exponent shown, it's assumed to be a 1, OK? And 1 is one of those positive integers. Then you have 5 all by itself. There's no x there, and it can be thought to be written as x to the power 0. Because x to the power 0, anything to the power 0, is 1, and 5 times 1 is 5, right? So you can write those. And I'm going to put them on my paper. And this is going to be a little bit weird for us because I am going to have to toggle back and forth between my paper and my shared screen. So um, P.3. Let me write this one down. Maybe it's written down down here. Um, no, it is not written down here. So the number in front is what is called a coefficient, OK? And as long as my exponents, all my exponents are positive integers. So notice here we have 2 and 2. Those are both positive integers, so that's a polynomial. Here we have 1 and 1, invisible 1 and invisible 1. So again, that's a polynomial, OK? Um, no, it didn't have it here. So let me stop my share and show you what I was talking about. Make sure you pin my video so that when I go to my camera, you can see my paper, OK? So here's my paper. Um, this is here. And if I have 2x, this can be written as 2x to the 1. And 5 by itself can be written as x to the 0, OK? Because remember, x to the 0 equals 1. So 5x to the 0 would be 5 times 1, which is equivalent to 5. So it's just a weird way of writing it. So if you look at both of these terms, their exponents are positive integers, which means this is a polynomial. So all the exponents on all the variables have to be positive integers meaning they cannot be negative, they cannot be fractions, they cannot be decimals. If you have negative exponents, fraction exponents, or decimal exponents, it is not a polynomial. It is something completely different, OK? So polynomials are normally written like this, where it's actually in what's called descending order, OK? This non-negative. The reason why they choose to use the word non-negative integer instead of positive integer is because um, zero really doesn't have a sign. And I, I included it in the positive integer category. But truly, it's neither positive nor negative. So when they say non-negative, it means you can include zero and then all the positives. OK? So technically, I should have said non-negative integer, OK? Now, if I want to put this in order, notice that the powers decrease. So here you have a power in 
and then here it's one less. And then it keeps going down to x to the power one, and then eventually to the invisible x to the power zero, okay? Um, so that's called descending order when it does that. It's called descending order. And you usually want your polynomials to be in that order before you continue, okay? Um, the first one is called the leading coefficient, the coefficient that's in front of the guy with the highest exponent. And then the guy all the way at the end that doesn't have any variables whatsoever is called the constant. So I need you to know there's all of these A's are coefficients. Every time that you have a letter, a number in front of a letter, it's called a coefficient. When you have a number without a letter, it's called a constant, okay? And these are words that I'm gonna be using throughout the whole semester, coefficient and constant. So that's why I wanted to make sure you know the difference between the two because those two words are used a lot. So coefficient is a number in front of a letter and then constant is the number without a letter. So we have polynomials can have one term. Those would be called monomials. Polynomials can have two terms, like my 2x plus 5. That's two terms. That's called a binomial. Um, and they can have three terms, which are called trinomials. Anything over three is just called the general polynomial. There are names for them. You can go look them up and Google them if you want to. There's some weird names. Um, but for us, we usually just say polynomial when it's power four and above, okay? Um, or four terms and above. We just say polynomial. Um, and then when we write it, remember I told you we write it in descending order? That's actually what's called standard form. So typically your, your polynomials will be given to you in standard form. If they are not given to you in standard form, it's in your best interest to rewrite it so that it is in standard form. And that can be done wrong. So we'll probably talk about how to do that in just a few minutes. Okay, here we have a polynomial that has all zero coefficients is called the zero polynomial. Because if I have zero times X, it doesn't matter what the exponent is on X. Zero times anything is just zero, right? So if I just have a bunch of zeros all added up together, well, that's zero. So this number by itself is the constant zero but it can also be called the zero polynomial. And it says no degree is assigned to the zero polynomial. The degree is zero. So instead of saying degree of zero, they just say no degree. What is degree? Degree is the exponents, okay? And if you have two variables like this, the degree of this blue, term is going to be two because x has an exponent of invisible one and y has an exponent of invisible one. And so if I put those two together, I get a degree of two. Now this term here has a degree of four because x has a two power and y has a two power. So together, the degree is four. And when you're putting things in descending order, it's that degree that you're looking at, okay? And if you wanna know, we, we can tell what the degree of each term is, right? By adding, that's what the word sum means, by adding the exponents of the variables in the term. But if we wanna know what's the degree of the whole polynomial, you just take the one term that has the highest degree. And that degree is the degree of the term. So for instance, back to that one with the x squared, y squared. This whole polynomial has a degree four. You don't add up the first term's degrees and the second term's degrees and the third term's degrees. The whole polynomial follows the degree of the highest degreed term, okay? So for this whole polynomial, the degree of the whole thing is four. If I look at this one, the degree of the whole polynomial is also four because that is the highest exponent of X. Here, 
the highest degree is one because of the invisible one next to the X. There are gonna be problems in the homework that ask us to give them the degree and things like that. So for instance, they're asking you the degree of this whole polynomial. Well, three and six make nine, one and one make two, seven and four make 11. Which one had the highest? It's this term right here that had the highest. So not only is that the term with the highest degree, but that also tells me the degree of the whole thing. Now, the leading coefficient of the polynomial is the coefficient of the highest degree. So in this particular polynomial, x7, y to the fourth was the term with the highest degree. So if I wanted to know what the quote unquote leading coefficient of the polynomial is, I'm going to look at his coefficient, which what does that mean? That means the number in front of him. There is no number, it's an invisible one, but there is a minus sign there. So the, the leading coefficient here would actually be negative one. Now we're gonna get, that's a bunch of definitions, right? You probably have already heard them before or maybe not. So that's why we're talking about it. Um, but we are gonna go over, um, we had to talk about all that. So when I use these words later, you know what I'm referring to because it will come into play later when we get to fractions, when I have to say leading coefficient, and you'll need to know what a leading coefficient is. Also in that same section, it's gonna ask you for the degree and you need to know the degree. So these words will come up later. Constant, that's important. This guy is a constant, 14 right here, because it has no X's. 15, 21, and 10 are all coefficients. And actually that's inaccurate. It's positive 15, positive 21, and negative 10 are all coefficients. Okay, so now we're gonna move into the meat of this section, and that is the polynomial multiplication. So when you use the word product, it means multiply. So if they say find the product of these two polynomials, they're telling you to multiply. And what you do is you do the distributive property. Now, I know some of you learned FOIL when you learned this first. FOIL is not wrong, but you need to understand that it comes from an actual mathematic property. And that property is the distributive property, okay? And the distributive property is better to remember than FOIL. Because as soon as I put more than two terms here and two terms here, you can't do it doing FOIL because then you'll be missing stuff, okay? So it's better to do it the distributive way. And how do you do that? You take the first term, whatever it is in the first parentheses, this three X here. Then you multiply that by all of the second parentheses. Then you take the second term here, minus two, and multiply that by all of the second parentheses. So that's what you see here on the right-hand side, right? They took the three X, multiplied it by five X plus seven, they took the negative two and multiplied it by five X plus seven. And then it's just a matter of distributing the three X to those two terms, and then taking this minus two and distributing it to both terms over here. So um, when you multiply these, you when you multiply, you have to remember you're adding exponents, right? Because X times X is what X squared means, okay? So by definition, x times x is x squared. And then you multiply these, you multiply the coefficients, and then keep your variable, multiply the coefficients, keep the variable, multiply these two constants, and you got that guy. Then you need to combine what are called like terms. So when you have the same variables with the same exponents, those are called like terms. And so I noticed that I have 21x, right, with invisible one exponent, and negative 10 with invisible one exponent. So since both of those have the same variable x, and they have the same exponents on x, both are one, I can combine the positive 21 and the negative 10. So positive 21 take away 10 is actually positive 11, which is where the expression at the bottom came from, okay? So again, the FOIL method can only be used when you have 
two binomials, two parentheses with two terms inside. Anything more than that, you can't use FOIL, okay? So we're gonna practice these and I'm gonna write these down. And then I will go over to my screen. So number one, it wants me to multiply that. And you can try it on your own if you're, you know, because you can see the screen right now. So try it on your own and then we'll see if you get the same thing that I get. And if you don't, we'll talk about why, right? Now there's more at the bottom, but we'll do those in a little bit, okay? So make sure that you pin my video so that you can see this. And let me try to focus my thing a little bit better. Okay. So for this one, all three of these do not require FOIL, but they do require the distributive property because I have one thing times a polynomial, I have one monomial times a polynomial, and this one's backwards, but it's the same thing. It's a monomial times a polynomial, okay? And so all three of these actually require the distributive property. So here we're gonna take three X and we're gonna multiply it by X squared. Remember there's an invisible one coefficient. So three times one is three. And then X times X squared, you're gonna add those exponents. So one plus two will make X cubed. Then I'm gonna take three X times negative five X. So three times negative five is negative 15. X to the one times X to the one is going to give me X to the two. And then three X times positive one, positive three times positive one is positive three. There's no X over here to combine with it. So you just get the X to the one. It's invisible though. You don't write that in there, okay? And if you try to write it in WebAssign, it may tell you that this can be written without the one. And so that would be my solution there. Same thing goes for this, but notice this time it's a negative thing that I'm distributing. It's a negative term that I'm distributing. So I'm gonna take negative two times positive four y squared. So negative two times positive four is negative eight. Y to the one times y to the square is y to the three. A negative two times a negative five is actually a positive 10. And then this one doesn't have any y's to combine with that. So it's just the one y from the front. And that's the end of it, okay? Here, it's the other way around. Notice that what I'm distributing is on the right-hand side. This is called right-handed distributing, and it is totally okay to do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go backwards. I'm gonna go this way first, and then this way, okay? So negative five times a positive five is negative 25. This does not have any T's to go with that T, so it's just gonna be the T. 5 times negative 5t is negative 25t. Then I've got to do negative 1.5t squared times negative 5. And here's where I'm lazy. I'm going to multiply this in there. So negative 1.5 times negative 5. And you could do this for all of the numbers if you wanted to. Like if you just wanted to jot the numbers in there, you could to get the coefficients. But I typed the negative 1.5 times negative 5, and I got a positive 7.5. Now here I do have t squared times t, which will make it t to the third now. Not too, too bad. Um, I believe most of you have probably already seen this before. I'm hoping. I did not go look up, and I probably should have. That's, I'm not required to do it, but I probably should have just because I'm a curious person. Um, probably looked up how many people have taken the 410 class and then how many people have you just placed from the, the test, the placement test, how many of you just placed straight into this class? Um, cause there is a class lower level than this one. And in that one, they show you 
they show you how to solve equations. They start introducing you into polynomials. And then I think you even multiply and you may even get so far as to factoring them a little bit. Um, but I don't know where everyone's at, which is why I have to start at the very, very beginning so that we're all on the same page, okay? So I'm gonna go back to my screen. I hope everyone got the same thing that I did. And I also hope everyone tried it. We're not in class, so I can't spy on you and I can't make sure that you're trying it, but I hope that you did. Um, but once we get to class, I will walk around the room and monitor you. Or if you raise a hand and you have a question, you can show me. Um, but we can do it. Um, and it, it, this part flows a little bit better in a face-to-face -face environment. It just does. Um, but let me go ahead and write down the next um, problems. So number four is this one. And then number five, see number five, you would not be able to do FOIL because it's not just two terms times two terms. Okay, so I'm only writing down the problems from the practice page two of three. We'll come down to the third practice sheet once we finish with this one, okay? And then once we finish that last practice sheet, um, I think we are done with this particular, yep. So we've got one more page, page 12, which is practice page three of three, and then it's the next section. And we're not gonna cover that next section today. That's what we're gonna do tomorrow, okay? So once we get through these um, problems here, you should be able to have enough information to go to that homework assignment and complete it. Now I understand we can't do that just yet because I've got to fix that link, okay? But I'm going to do everything I can to get that fixed as soon as possible because I want you guys to do the bits. I want you to do the homeworks as you get the information. I really, it, I, I told you, I don't even recommend that people wait to do everything later. Um, so it kind of bothers me that that link is not working, but it's not, not something that I did and it's not something that any of you guys have done. So we've done everything we could do, you know, to not have that happen, but it still happened. And so now I've got to deal with it. Okay, let's keep going over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and write, rewrite this to distribute. I know you can do FOIL and some of you may do it and get it faster than I do, but I'm gonna actually do it the way I would like to see you do it because the way I do this problem is the exact same way I have to do this one. I don't have a choice here. I'd have to do the distributive property here, but just to practice it beforehand, I'm gonna apply it to this one as well. So we're gonna take this first term, 2x, and we're just gonna multiply it by everything over here in the second parentheses. Then I'm gonna take the second term, and since it says minus six, I'm gonna write minus six, and then multiply it by everything in that second parentheses. And then now I'm gonna do exactly what I did in the first one, is I'm gonna distribute these. This part should go a lot faster than the way I've done the first three, okay? So I'm gonna just go 10x squared plus two x. You should be able to do it that fast, okay? Here though, I have a negative six that I have to distribute. So be careful when you're doing that. It's negative 30x and negative six. If you don't look at this as the entire negative six being distributed, you will not get the right sign here. And then you'll get the wrong answer, okay? So make sure that you are thinking of this, like this is a whole negative six and that is what's getting multiplied. Why? People get confused because they see plus signs and minus signs and they're like, why are you treating it as a negative when it's a minus, okay? There's a reason. Negative six is the same as plus negative six. So it truly is addition. This number right here, minus six, if I write x minus six, is the same as x plus a negative six, okay? So this really could be written as plus a negative six times all of that stuff in parentheses. And then it becomes a little bit more evident. 
because then when I'm done, I would have a plus sign from this symbol and then a negative 30 X and then a plus sign from that symbol again, and then a negative six. And remember when you have back to back um, signs, this is a plus times a negative, which turns it into a minus sign. It's like going backwards in the representation. And then a plus and a minus or plus a negative is the same as a subtraction, okay? So these properties are what are happening behind the scenes that allow me to do what I'm doing, okay? I'm not just doing stuff without any basis for what enables me to do it, okay? So keep that in mind. Because I, I get a lot of students that just start doing things and <laughs> there's no real property that, that tells them how to do that or why to do that. Now, this is not done because I do have like terms. I have positive 2x and negative or minus 30x that have the same variable with the same exponents. So this guy will come down because it's not getting combined with anything. And if you need to type it in the calculator, two, my, oops, not 22, two minus 30, and I get negative 28. So instead of doing plus a negative, we can just write minus 28x and then minus six. So I know some people get confused with the plus and minuses. I hope that that information helped clear it up a little bit um, on how the pluses and the minuses all work or positives and negatives. They're really essentially the same thing because of the representation over here. So now we're gonna do the same thing for this big guy. Hopefully you guys tried it or are in the process of trying it. And so hopefully you get the same thing that I do but we're gonna follow the exact same process. First term here times everything in that other guy. Then the next term here times everything over there again. And then the last term there times everything over there. Okay, so that's that. Now I have to actually distribute. So here and here we get x to the fourth, there we get 2x cubed. Here we get 3x squared. Now we've got a negative x that we're multiplying out. So a negative and a positive is negative x cubed. Negative and a positive, negative 2x squared. Negative and a positive, negative 3x. Same thing here, another negative number to distribute in. So negative four X squared, negative eight X, negative 12. And just FYI, I am human, right? There, we're gonna, me personally, um, I'm dealing with a lot of numbers every day. Things can get jumbled in my brain sometimes and I might write down the wrong numbers, okay? So if you catch me, I always tell students, it doesn't happen like every time, um, but it can happen. And if you're the first one to catch me in an error, um, I do give you a bonus point on that test. Since we're talking about unit A, if you catch me in an error on any of the sections in unit A, I do make a list and I give you guys a bonus point. So it kind of promotes, you know, you guys are paying attention. <laughs> Um, and then two, you guys are rewarded whenever you do catch me making an error, okay? Um, I have no shame, you know, I am human. And if, if I write down the wrong number, I write down the wrong number. It's just an opportunity for you to get a bonus point, okay? Um, so if you do see that I made an error, I need you guys to correct me and correct me like as soon as you see it. Don't wait till I keep going. <laughs> and then I've got the error all over the place, right? Um, so make sure you catch me early as you can, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. So now this is huge. This has got a lot of terms. Oh my goodness. So we've got to combine the like terms. The strategy that I use is I look for the guy with the highest exponent, and then I start going down from there so that it's already in that standard form, right? Where it's descending in um, exponents. So x to the fourth is the highest exponent and there's no one like him. So I'm actually gonna just rewrite that one first. Then I have x cubed. 
And notice the symbols that I use underneath to help me distinguish everything. So for him, I put three lines underneath. For this one, I put two lines. So any other X cubed terms that I see, I'm gonna put two lines underneath that. And it helps my eyes to like focus on all the X cubes. And so I really have two, a positive two X cubed minus one X cubed, which gives me a positive one X cubed. But that one is invisible. You don't ever write that one. You don't write one exponents and you don't write one coefficients. They're automatically understood. The fact that I have an X here means that there is one X, not X squared, it's just one. And the fact that I have an X cubed here, it's only one X cubed, one apple, right? I don't need to have the one there to symbolize that. Now I'm gonna move over to the X squared. So I'm gonna put one line under my X squared. And I really should put them under where the signs are at too, because those signs have to be included. So X squared, I see another X squared here and another X squared there. So I've got positive three and then minus two minus four. So that gives me a negative three X squared. Notice that I am not changing the exponents, okay? You're basically just counting all your fruit. You're counting all your apples, all your pineapples, all your oranges, and I don't know, all your pears, okay? P-E-A-R-S. Um, so the X to the fours could be considered your apples. There was only one, we brought it down. These could be considered your you know, pineapples. So you have two of them, then you took away one. These could be considered your oranges. So we had three, took away two, that left us with one, and then you took away four. So now we owe somebody three pineapples, right? Or three, whatever it was I said, oranges, okay? So don't change the exponents when you're combining the like terms. You're just counting how many X squareds you have, okay? Now I ran out of lines, so I'm gonna start going to another symbol. And I'm going to use um, like a little curvy thing like this. I'm gonna use two. So I'm doing the X's now and I see another one that looks like that. So I'm gonna combine those. Negative three minus eight is negative 11. So I have negative 11 X's. And then the last one, it's the constant. There's only one constant and it's minus 12 or negative 12. So without this one, this is the standard form polynomial answer. Okay, hopefully you guys got all of that one correct if you tried to do it on your own. Um, again, if we're in the classroom environment, this is a little bit easier for me to make sure that everyone's doing it and that everyone's doing it correctly and even the opportunity for me to catch you making a mistake, okay? Because it is far better for me, for you to do it and make a mistake and me point out your mistake and you learn from that mistake than for me to just always explain everything. And, and, and then people always tell me, well, everything makes such perfect sense when you're explaining it. But then when I try to do it, I can't do it. And that it's supposed to be that way, right? I'm supposed to help make it look simple and easy and explain it so that it is as simple as it can be. Um, but you all need the practice. You don't watch a professional basketball player play basketball and then jump on the court and you're just as good, right? It doesn't happen that way. So it's the same with math. You have to get that practice in so that you can be um, as good and as fast as I am, okay? So that's why the homework is super, super important so that you get that practice in. So you're ready for game day, which in our class is test day, right? Um, so last one, it's very much like number four. The only difference here is that there's something funny going on in there. I noticed that the numbers are the same and the numbers are the same, but the signs are different. So what's that gonna do for us? That's the only reason that this problem is in here. So I'm gonna take two X times this guy and two X times, or I'm sorry, positive three times that guy again. Then I'm gonna distribute 
And then I'm gonna combine my like terms. I only have these like terms. And what happens here? I owe somebody six oranges and then I gave them six oranges. So now we're even, right? There's no more oranges, they're gone. So we just have four X squared minus nine. These two guys cancel each other out, okay? And so that's what happens when you multiply, these are called conjugates. When the numbers are the same, but the signs in the middle are different. Those are called conjugates. That word is gonna come back when we get to imaginary stuff, okay? There is imaginary numbers <laughs> and we will talk about imaginary numbers and they do have what are called conjugates. So let me share my screen again so we can get to those last few problems because we're running out of time here. So we only have two more and then we're done. And I should be able to finish these two um, pretty quickly. Might not seem so, but it is. I can do them pretty quick. So for these problems, if you learn anything in my class, and I mean it, if you learn anything in my class, do not tell me that the answer is this, because that's wrong, okay? Um, same thing for this one. The answer is not x cubed minus 27. That's wrong, okay? There is no rule and no property that says if you're adding or subtracting two terms that you can distribute an exponent. There is a property that says if I have two X squared, if they're multiplied together, I can give each person that exponent, okay? That's a property, but there is no property that tells us that we can do that with plus or minus. So because of that, you have to go back to the basic definition of what a square and a cube is. And that is that it means that it's this thing times itself. And how many times does it get multiplied by itself? That depends on the exponent. So since this is a two, I should have two of these factors exactly the same. Since this one's a cube, I should have three of them the same, okay? And then it's just a matter of doing exactly what we've already done. So here we're gonna do two X times that guy and then minus five times that guy. So I get four X, oops, I forgot to bring down the X, two X times that guy. So that becomes four X squared, that becomes 10 X, this becomes 10 X negative, and that becomes positive 25. Negative times a negative is positive 25. So then I get four X squared minus 20 X plus 25. And that's that one. Here, when you're multiplying three numbers together, you have to multiply two of them first, and then the result gets multiplied by the other one. So I'm gonna do this faster. I'm gonna do this in my head. I'm gonna distribute the X through there. And then I'm gonna distribute the minus three here. So notice that I'm not writing out the step, this step right here where I separated it. I'm using the rule without having to write it down, okay? And as you get, through this, you start to get faster at that, okay? Sometimes you can even do the rule in your head and then just get here. It doesn't matter to me how many steps you write, just as long as I know you know that a cube means to multiply in three, three of them. So then here I'm gonna do the same thing in my head. I'm gonna take X times all three of these guys and I'm gonna take negative three times all three of those guys. So I get X to the cube, negative six X squared, positive nine X. Now I'm gonna multiply the negative three to everybody. Negative three X squared plus 18 X minus 27. So notice how you can go faster and faster. Here I have X squared X squared. So that's negative nine X squared. Here I have X and X. That is 27 X. And then I have my 27 constant. And this is the final answer in its standard form. So I finished with like two minutes, maybe a minute and a half left. So does anybody have any questions about either what we covered or math, you know, the section or anything about the orientation or anything like that? I have a question. 
Sure. Okay, for um, just like a problem in general, you say like how it's the invisible one, right? Like I know I learned this last year, but I just kind of don't remember. Okay. So like, how will I know what like, I think it's called my coefficient, like the, like how I have like it squared or to the like cubed. Uh-huh. Like how will I know, like what's that, what's that supposed to be? Like this guy? Yeah. If there's no coefficient in the front, it's always a one. So if you just okay. see like an X by itself or an X squared by itself, always remember there's an invisible one in front of it the same thing if you see the x by itself whether it has a coefficient or not the exponent is also an invisible one always 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 good does anybody else have any questions i have a question regarding the orientation sure go ahead so um, I'm just like, it has me stuck on the getting started with WebAssign. Yes. And, uh, but it shows that it's done on WebAssign. It's just the modules for Canvas that it, it doesn't let me like view your story and keep going. Let me, okay. You're saying something different than what I'm experiencing. So let me go to my WebAssign and make sure that it shows in WebAssign on my end that you've done it. See? So it is working for some of y'all because for some of y'all, you you wouldn't be on my roster. So apparently these people were able to get in. Um, can y'all see my screen? No, right? No. Okay. Uh, no. Good, good, good. <laughs> I don't want to click on somebody's scores with y'all. Okay, who's talking first of all? Abraham. Abraham. Okay, so I'm going to go click on your scores just so I can see um, what's going on. So yeah, you do have, you have done it. See, so I don't know, We're, this can be an interesting conversation because it looks like some of you are having an issue with the getting started link and then some of you are not. And the same thing with my online, I just saw my online class that there were a couple of people in there. So let me go to my grade book real quick in Canvas. I know you can't see, I don't want you to because I don't want everybody seeing everybody's stuff. But yeah, it is not populating. You're getting started. Yeah, so I just, like, I can't even see your story. I can't I will put. I will put it in there. I will put it in there. I will manually enter your grade okay. for now, just so that you can see the rest of the other module for those four that got in there, but it still needs to be fixed. So I'm still gonna talk to them at noon and, and try to get that fixed. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So yeah, all four of you have done it. So Solomon, Ramiro, uh, Abraham and Frederick, or Fred Frederick, I didn't say that right the first time um let me mark it in here that you've done it so i'm just manually typing in the scores which should enable you to get to the other thing oh abraham there you are okay um so that will work for now but um I'm still gonna talk to them at noon. Okay, does anybody else have any questions? I know we ran over like three minutes, I apologize. But if not, then you guys have a good day. I will send out an announcement as soon as I work with Cengage to try to get um, the web assign links working, okay? Yeah, see, there's somebody saying in the chat that there still goes to the unlimited thing. So there's a problem. I don't know why it's working for some and not for others, um, but we're gonna try to figure that out at noon, okay? So as soon as I figure out what's going on and hopefully I have good news that it's all fixed, um, you guys can continue and, and go on with it, okay? So look, look out for either a remind message or um, an email announcement. Just cause if not everyone has signed up for remind yet, I have to go through email. Once everyone's in remind, then I can um, send remind 
announcements. Okay, well, if that's all, guys, you guys have a great day. Tomorrow will be less orientation talk and more math. Um, I know it, it's kind of, you know, the first week and we have to hit the ground running. Um, but unfortunately, it's two classes in one, so we have to. We have to. We just don't have a lot of um, wiggle room. I built in two days, but I'm trying to use those two days if needed, okay? If not, you have off early for Thanksgiving. Not a problem, right? Um, okay, well, then you guys have a great day. I hope to see you tomorrow morning. Bye, guys. Bye, Bye Miss. Have a good day. Bye. Bye, thank you. Bye, thank you. Um, I, I had a quick question. Sure. Uh, this, it's Kenna. Um, I think I booked uh, one of the, um, uh, the doodle like, uh, sessions, but uh, I just messaged you yesterday about the situation. What's going on? Or let me um, let me stop recording first, and then okay. and then you can tell me. Okay, so I'm gonna end this recording.